The Class 700 De Zero City is a fleet of 115 8 and 12 car trains built by Siemens for use on the Thameslink routes across London. The first Class 700s were introduced on the 20th of June 2016 and now operate all Thameslink services crossing London from north to south. 60 8 car and 55 12 car trains were built to replace the fleet of 86 4 car Class 319s, 23 4 car Class 377s and the 29 4 car Class 387s as well as some other trains which have had their services transferred over to Thameslink from the other operators including Great Northern, Southern and South Eastern. They were ordered as part of a £1.6 billion deal with the Department for Transport and the Rolling Stock Leasing Company Cross London Trains to replace the current Rolling Stock used on Thameslink routes because the new trains will provide the operator with a single, large fleet to reduce maintenance and running costs, as well as making the service more reliable. The new trains would also be longer than the current options to allow for more capacity, as well as to be compatible with the new automatic train operation, which is to be used on the Thames Inc. core, to allow for the trains to run with closer headways, to allow for more frequent service through the core, as well as to be integrated with the planned European train control signalling system, which has been installed on the East Coast mainline during the 2020s. The Class 700s are the first to zero cities to be ordered, with later orders from Southwest Trains for Class 707s and from Great Northern for the Class 717s, both of which are part of the Desiro City family. The Desiro City is based upon the Desiro UK family of trains, which have been built by Siemens for the UK since 2002. The Desiro Cities share some similar features with previous Desiros and some differences, but in my opinion have most in common with the Class 380. The Desiro Cities are designed more for commuters, with wide open interiors and walk-through gangways, colour electronic passenger information systems and a new, lighter weight and more efficient design to reduce running costs and track access charges. One of the major notable differences is the change of bogies from the SF5000 series, which had been used on all previous Desiros, and the newer SF7000 series, which had been used on all the Desiro Cities. The new bogies were a concern because they had not been tested before in the UK, whereas Bombardier had already got a proven, lightweight bogey design, which was first seen in 2000 on the Voyagers. The new Siemens bogey has had the overall weight reduced by a third when compared to the previous version, and has an inside frame design with shorter wheelbase and hollow axles, all of which have helped reduce the overall weight. The Class 700s are maintained at two depots. One was built from scratch in Three Bridges, and the existing Hornsey Emu depot was enlarged. Other locations were considered, and Tunbridge was the only other location to make it to the shortlist, despite not being served by any Thameslink services. The Class 700s also have numerous staging locations, which are located at various ends to their routes, to allow for cleaning and emptying and filling of tanks for toilets and other facilities. This allows for fewer of the train sets to have to be returned to the depot at night, which makes it easier to run the frequent service that Thameslink operates with fewer empty coaching stock movements. The Class 700s are all dual voltage units, able to operate from 750 volts DC third rail south of the Thames and 25 kilovolt AC overhead north of the Thames, with the changeover happening at Farringdon and City Thameslink. They are all capable of 100 miles an hour. The eight car sets are 162 metres long, have a weight of 273.9 tonnes and a power output of 4,291 horsepower. The 12 car sets are 242 metres long, have a weight of 400.6 tonnes and a power output of 6,439 horsepower. Each train has a driving motor coach with the first two thirds of the coach behind the cab given over to first class at each end of the train and the second coach in from each end contains the pantograph and necessary transformer equipment. The middle two coaches from each train have the disabled wheelchair spaces with one holding a disabled toilet. The eight car sets have four motor cars and the 12 car sets have six motor cars where every axle of each motor coach is powered. The reliability has improved over time, but it is still not reaching the levels of the predecessors, and even the Class 707 cousins operate for South Western Railway. In January of this year, the Class 707s were achieving an MTIM MAA of 78,322 miles, and in August of this year, the Class 700s has still only achieved 14,974 miles between technical faults. The seating provided has received a lot of criticism, surrounding the fact that the number of seats was fewer than that in the Class 319s and Class 377s of a comparable length. This was due to the fact that the Class 700s were all fitted with 2 plus 2 seating, whereas the predecessors were fitted with 2 plus 3 seating and less space for standing passengers. I will talk more on the seats later. 
During their first four years of operation, one major incident had occurred. On the 9th of August 2019, disturbances on the national grid led to the frequency falling below 48.914 Hz, and 60 Class 700s and Class 717s that were operating on AC all failed because the power was below 49 Hz. Half of the trains were able to be restarted by the drivers, but others which have received a more recent software update from Siemens Mobility required help from technicians. This led to massive delays on the East Coast Main Line, with 371 trains cancelled, 220 trains part cancelled, and 873 trains delayed. The Class 700s have been placed in the Thameslink livery from their introduction, although the logo has changed since then. The livery, in my opinion, is very dull when compared with the previous operator, First Counter Connect's Urban Lights livery, that the original trains have been painted in before the change of franchise over to go via Thameslink Railway as the Thameslink livery is just white and grey with light blue doors. Although some trains have been repainted into other liveries for different reasons, with 75 painted with a rainbow livery at each end in recognition of pride, and more recently 71111 has been repainted into Thank You NHS livery in recognition of the key workers during the Covid pandemic. Now let's turn to the interior of the train. At the front of the train is a reasonable sized first class area, taking up two thirds of the front carriage, with wide, large seats with armrests, large tables for doing work on, and plug sockets under the seats which are more comfortable than in standard class. Now let's turn to the standard class seating on this train. This is an example of a group of seats facing each other, which fortunately line up with the windows. As you can see, the seats are very thin and have no seat spaces. The seats in standard class are very hard and not particularly comfortable and are often referred to as ironing board seats due to their shape and level of hardness. This is an example of an airline seat which has a seat back fold down table present. This is a feature not present on all class 700s yet. Also you can see how little legroom is available in the airline seats. This is an example of the electronic display boards which are throughout the trains, with four in each carriage, two facing in each direction. These LCD displays show various pieces of information including the TFL service update, the location you are in the train, with then the added information for things like which carriages are busier. And where the toilets are within the train and whether or not they are engaged. It will then move on to provide safety information, like information about the British Transport Police and the fact that there is CCTV in operation on the train. The display will continue on to tell you the destination of the train, the next stop and the calling pattern of the service. This is one of the door vestibule areas, and it has plenty of space for standing passengers, as well as a luggage rack and a bin. You'll notice that at the ends of some of the carriages there are various electrical cabinets containing pieces of equipment. As standard with all Siemens trains, there are fire extinguishers under one of the seats in every carriage next to one of the doors, which are very easy to get hold of. In some places there are fold-down seats to provide extra standing space in those areas. Throughout an 8 carriage train there are 3 toilets, 2 standard and 1 accessible. In a 12 carriage train there are 5 toilets, 4 standard and 1 accessible. This is an example of a standard toilet. It is accessed through a manual sliding door. There is a toilet with a fold down baby changing table above it. And there is a sink with water, soap and a hand dryer. The toilet is a reasonable size given the space it takes up. Throughout the entire train all the seats are cantilevered off the walls to create a fully unobstructed floor which makes the cleaning of the train much easier for the cleaners.
This is an example of the wheelchair accessible space next to the accessible toilet, with a second space in the next carriage. There are also fold down seats fitted in the area to provide extra seating capacity for passengers when wheelchairs are not present, or for those who are travelling with wheelchair users. The fold down seats are just as uncomfortable as the rest of the seats, and this is an example of a pull up and fold down table behind the middle seat. This is an example of a 12 carriage train on a service between Horsham and Peterborough, and we're just south of Huntington. As I mentioned earlier, this train has fold down tables, which is a feature not present on all Class 700s. The Class 700s were initially ordered without fold down tables or Wi Fi, and when the trains entered service, it was realised that these would have been sensible features to have included on the train. So since then, new sets have been delivered with these features, and older sets are being retrofitted. And as of August 2020, when this video was edited, there were still a number of sets without Wi Fi or seat back tables. Throughout the train you will notice the wide gangways between the carriages, which are helping to provide the train with an impression of more space. Now passing us on our left is an LNER Class 91 set on a service to London King's Cross. This is the first class section at the back of the train. On most services you will find the rear first class section to be declassified, which means standard class ticket holders can make use of the area and enjoy larger, more comfortable seats with the added bonuses of charging sockets and tables.